Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 4 of Kerbal Rising, and we start bringing our colonization fleet to Duna. Last time, we overthrew the forces defending Duna and took it for the glory of the UFN. And now we've sent three freighters packed with supplies to build some mining installations on Duna and Ike so that we can build more ships, more warships, to help us liberate more worlds. One of the uh, ships from the fleet breaks away and heads to Ike. I'm switching over now to the fusion torches on those kind of asymmetrical engines at the back, which I, I quite like the look of, actually. Um, and yeah, now it'll get into Ike, uh, deploy its workers and, uh, and uh, all the equipment and materials we have in the ship, and start building our mining installation on Ike. Um, because it can fit one mining installation, Duna of course can fit two. So uh, these ships are heading down to Duna to build some, uh, build some mining installations there, which means er at the start of every turn and at the end of every turn, we'll, we will have nine points of ships to deploy. But for the investment of 12 points, it costs 12 points to deploy these ships to colonize Duna this turn, which means that's all we can do this turn. So I hope you've enjoyed- no, I'm joking, we've uh, combined two turns into one, Penguin and I. But anyway, we have colonized Duna, we have liberated Duna from the evil Clothulians, the dictators who subjugated their people. Although, they were brilliant explorers, so I doubt we've seen the last of them. But anyway, with Duna colonized, we need to pick somewhere to send our fleet next to liberate more people, and we have decided on Eve. So we've rounded up our fleet, we've sent our carriers back to Nebos for a resupply and to pick up a new corvette and a new ground assault crew. Two ground assault crews, mind you, because we have two carriers, and we intend to take Eve in one turn. One fell swoop. We have, of course, our frigate. We now have one normal corvette, one armored corvette with more torpedoes and a skiff to destroy the fleet around Gilly, and then our ground forces can head to Eve to rescue its people and to turn it into an industrial planet for us, so that we'll have three industrial planets. Now, Eve also presents a little bit of a score to settle. A score for all Kerbal kind. Eve was taken over by A Industries because of their greed and love of the color purple. A Industries is a nation-state slash corporation from the old world and the old wars. After the events of the old wars, they became drunk on their power and their technological advantages, but they were maddened by their inability to shift their enemies and take the land, specifically the territorial Arctic protection on Tond. So, they unleashed nuclear hellfire to try and melt the Arctic and destroy the Entente. However, the Entente had taken over its enemy's territory, the Penguinaut Empire, building up a massive stockpile of their own of nuclear weapons, and then unleashed them on A Industries, plunging Kerbin into a nuclear winter, a nuclear wasteland and hellhole from which only a few Kerbals escaped, including our own. So, we're here to also settle a score with the old guard, the people who destroyed our home. So, we collect our battle fleet, split away from the carrier group, and head to Gilly, pulling off a small burn just to get ourselves into the right position, and then we will encounter Gilly and go and lay waste to what is left of A Industries' fleet. We arrive at Gilly, having a, a small burn to slow ourselves down and actually change the direction of our orbit, because I thought for some reason I was going in the opposite direction to um, the fleet waiting for us at Gilly. I was actually wrong about this, so we're going to have to change the direction again, but it doesn't matter because Gilly is such a tiny world. Um, but yes, and then you can see us getting into orbit and the reason I hate Gilly, because look at how different those orbits are. Get some gravity, Gilly! Well, I guess we'll just have to plunge some enemy ships onto the surface to try and increase the gravity a little bit. But yes, here we are at Gilly, little more than a large asteroid. Not a great place for installations or bases, but quite a nice place to keep your fleet in a pinch. So, we will need to move into our enemies. As I said, I may have turned the orbit the wrong way around, so uh, in our um, in encounter maneuver, we are going to have to flip the orbits back around, um, which is, it's fine. And you can see the uh, fleet holding formation now with that new Corvette. That is, uh, by the way, uh, Beluga Class Mark 1B, the new Corvette. It has four torpedoes instead of two, and medium armor, which uh, means it can pack, uh, well, can sustain quite a lot of damage. All the other ships are unarmored. 
Um, the Beluga class, the other Beluga class, the unarmored one, we launched last turn, and the Skiff, who has been around for pretty much ever since the first turn and has dealt quite a lot of damage to our enemies. Anyway, we move in towards our enemies now. We uh, orient, uh, orient our craft towards them so that we can lay down some effective fire, and our advantage against this quite formidable fleet is range. They have no railguns and no missiles, so we should uh, try and dispatch them early since they are armored. There is a frigate, a corvette, and a skiff. All of them armored well, all of them armed well, but lacking in range. So, I'm going to try and take them out with our new fangled guided missiles. We've got the new guidance system now so that we can use our RCS as well, which is new, to, um, to move our separation to below one meter and uh, head on in and destroy them. So we get within a kilometer, we take a little bit of fire, but nothing's going to hit us, they just don't have the rate of fire to stop this. And we slam into the frigate, the most deadly of the targets, with its 75 millimeter guns. We do a little bit of superficial damage and manage to trick the enemy into shooting it, um, but Nothing much, so we're gonna fire again. We'll fire everything if we have to. Um, so we prepare another 1.25 meter torpedo, the last of the ones we have. And like I said, we are using MechJev now to uh, as our targeting computer. And I've added RCS to all of my missiles to just uh, mean I can tweak the encounter a little bit to make sure we actually hit. And I can get all of my encounters down to a sub one meter, which is rather nice for destroying ships. Much better than the kind of dumb shooting of <laughs> previous episodes. Again, we take quite a bit of fire. I think we even take. A hit, but um, the missile can stand up to a single hit, and uh, soon we will be hitting the enemy. And luckily, the spinning enemy is now orientated more favorably, and we hit it in a soft spot and tear it limb from limb. The crew survives, and the ship is technically alive, but uh, there are no, there's no ammo on this, so uh, it's useless. And yes, the frigate is down before the fight even really begins. But I'm not satisfied with this. The Beluga Mark 1B is releasing one of its torpedoes, also upgraded with the new systems. The other Beluga didn't head back to Nebos, um, so it actually doesn't have the new missiles, because totally not just because I forgot to put them on. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to settle for four smaller ones and two big ones. Um, so yeah, we move in. We uh, take a little bit of fire, but this is even smaller and harder to hit. And we slam into the Corvette, not doing a lot of damage. The Corvette is also very well armored and these small torpedoes just don't do enough damage to armor. We hit it again and it, well, it moves and we get some superficial damage but nothing real. The third missile actually gets taken out by the 20 millimeter fire of the fighter, which, well, the skiff, um, which has decided to shoot now and uh, we do <laughs> strike the enemy ship but only with the engine and no warhead. The, uh, th the final missile, however, manages to get through the gunfire and hits so hard that it rips off a nice piece of the Corvette. If we can find it, there it is, and it's missing its whole underside. Its reactor, its reactor is exposed, and it is looking rather damaged. Also missing one of its guns, and uh, rather short on ammo. So, we move in the fleet. We'll send in the uh, Corvettes to provide some uh, semi-long-range, high rate of fire. And, of course, the, uh, the skiff for uh, high-speed runs to uh, strip things apart from close range, and the, uh, on the, and the frigate down there, opening fire early with its rail guns. Um, not particularly accurate at 18 kilometers, but enough to scare the enemy, hopefully. Annoyingly, um, the, it seems to be firing at the skiff, which is tiny, um, but extremely well armored. 500 millimeters of armor, which is heavy armor, which is real, rather annoying for a fighter, because it makes it very, very difficult to kill, because you can't hit it with rail guns because it's too small, and you can't destroy it with smaller guns because it's too strong. But anyway, we will persist and we will defeat it when we get a little closer. But my focus is going to be on the Corvette, because it does have an 8km range on its guns. The, uh, the skiff has 2.5km. It's basically useless except in very close range. So I actually do fire up some of the old torpedoes which don't have any guidance. Um, and, well, this one actually gets destroyed, and the second one misses as well. So, a little useless, but hey, it distracted the guns a little bit, I guess. And, uh, yeah. So, we're gonna have to go to guns and do this ourselves. Um, no help from missiles. So, we move in, you can see the fire has already erupted. The enemy corvette firing at maybe our frigate and one of our corvettes down there firing as well at, I believe, the enemy corvette. Um, that's the one I want to take out because obviously now it can start shooting at me. However, it actually runs out of ammo pretty quickly. We destroyed most of it with the missiles and I guess it fired quite a lot of it at, um, at the missiles. So, uh, yeah, it actually won't be a threat for too long. If we can destroy it quickly, there'll be no problem. Although it will keep distracting our guns um, and that's rather annoying because we need to focus everything on that skiff at some point. Because 500 millimeters of armor is no joke. That is 
ridiculous. It is very cheap to armor a skiff like that, but um, still rather mean. Anyway, yeah, you can see most of the uh, big rounds are actually flying in for the skiff, but this is taking some fire from it. Appears one of the uh, Corvettes, the 30 mils coming in, lighting it up. You can't see the bullets very well. There's occasional traces, but uh, most of the bullets you can just see whipping past. But uh, we see some good explosions on the, well, some good impacts on the ship at least, and uh, hopefully that'll be destroyed rather soon. Um, this still being fired at by things that can't hit it because they're too far away, rather annoyingly. But it's also impotent to defend itself because it's, well, too far away to use its guns. So the skiff is not to be worried about too much. I want to get rid of this. It has run out of ammo now, um, so it is no threat to us. It did get some shots at us, but nothing major. Um, so, yeah, I just want to take it out because, well, it's an enemy ship and also it's distracting a lot of my guns. So we send in the skiff for a high-speed run. It opens up with its 20mm uh, 20 Vulcan cannons. Not particularly big rounds, but it fires very fast and we know that this is a damn effective ship. We haven't had much chance to test it against armor yet. Um, but actually, it does quite a good job. You can see we're laying down a lot of fire. Not getting a ton of explosions right now, um, but a few bits are coming off. And uh, after a little while, when we're over with our Corvette, you can actually see it destroy the Corvette. That massive explosion was uh, a key connecting piece exploding. And now, well, now the enemy Corvette is totally... Well, totally destroyed, and we'll just light up the cockpit. Um, just to demonstrate how annoying armor is when you only have small caliber guns, we're going to watch this uh, skiff try and, with the help of 30mm cannons from the um, Beluga class, by the way, try and destroy this one cockpit. Now, a cockpit has a lot of uh, hit points, and this does have 150mm armor, but still, look at how long this is taking. Uh, eventually, though, it does go up and we can stop thinking about it and uh, move on to destroy the skiff. Now the skiff obviously ridiculously well armoured. I'm getting a lot of superficial damage but this... 30 mils don't do enough damage to get through the armour and the rail guns rarely hit unless they're very close because it's such a small target. So, after a little while, I, I bring the Cyclops class, uh, the UFN Cyclops, a little closer so that we can get some hits and things. Um, but I want to stay outside of its gun range because there's just no point going anywhere near it. I mean, it's useless by itself. Um, it would be a great mobile ship, but as a def point defense weapon, not so great. You just saw a railgun round hitting there. Enough railgun rounds do eventually hit, uh, combined with the sustained 30 mil doing lit little bits of damage. You just saw a railgun round go in there. Then eventually, we will get through this. But as we watch that, it is time for me to say that this is the end of the episode. Uh, this is only part one of uh, turn four um, of episode four. Part two will be out hopefully on the weekend or maybe Monday. I am very busy and these are taking a while to make. Um, so yeah, if it wasn't clear, this was turn four and five. Uh, same with Penguin's episode. We put two turns in one just because there was nothing to do in turn four. I was just colonizing. He was building up his fleet, so those wouldn't have been very good videos. Um, but yeah, I did split this into two just because this took a very long time to record. And also, it's already been like a 12 minute episode. So yeah. Anyway, you can see this uh, skiff just falling apart there. Um, but yes, this is the end of this. Next time we will be sending the carriers down to Eve now that uh, the space is clear. And uh, we'll be deploying... Well, we'll be deploying some fighters to have a bit of a dogfight on EVE, which is amazing because EVE is great for dogfights. The atmosphere is just amazing. Um, and we'll also be sinking a naval vessel. So, uh, big awesome episode next time, uh, over the weekend, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I will see you next time.